Hello, hello, and welcome back to Soul Connection Sunday. Um, as I said last week, those of you that have arrived at this reading probably know why you've arrived at this reading. You understand why there's a good chance you might be resonating with this kind of reading. You're experiencing this kind of connection. Um, I have videos on my channel that speak about soul connections, twin flames, all that kind of stuff. If you want to do some additional research into what it is you might be experiencing during this time, but I'm not going to kind of labor the point here today. We're going to get straight into the cards, straight into the energy. I do feel as though for the last few weeks, um, we've been tapping into a specific collective of a group of us um, that are resonating in a, in a similar vibration that are kind of on the same portion of the journey. Um, but what I said last week, and I'll say it again, I can't remember if I said it in the extended reading or if I said it in the main reading, um, but I did say that I'm feeling a shift coming in. And that either means that we're shifting into opening up the collective to like a new group of people, or it is that this, the existing collective is kind of shifting and the journey itself is changing. Like the, the wheel of fortune has landed and we're spinning the wheel and, and we're moving on, but who knows where it's going to land, right? So that's kind of the energy that I'm just feeling as your reader here today. My name is Gemma, by the way. Very, very, very happy to have everybody here. Everybody is welcome here. If this is you feel like you're beginning this journey, if this is something that you've been researching or questioning, or maybe you've been doing this for years and, and uh, this is not your first rodeo, so to speak. Everybody is welcome here today. I've got a selection of decks here. I've got the Sacred Destiny Oracle here, which I'm going to start us up with. This is traditional Rider Waite Smith. This is the Everyday Tarot. I've got the Kawaii Tarot over here. Get your deck out and the happy cards um, that I'll probably crack out in the extended reading. And then I have my raffle of messages. Um, this is a, select, a selection of messages that I have meditated on, tuned into spirit. And it took me three weeks to come up with these. There's about 600 messages, all of them numbered, all of them colored, as you can see. And we're going to be using these today. Let's get good shape and good mix up. Okay, but before we bring out these messages. Let us get a card from the Sacred Destiny just to really kind of peek behind the curtain and see what is going on energetically with the collective right now. There is an extended reading, which will be over on Patreon. The link is, as always, in the description. Be absolutely delighted to have you over there joining our little soul family. Okay, let's have a peek and see what's going on. We have a card of security. So this is definitely tapping into a theme here for us today. A card of security. And on the bottom, freedom. Interesting. The juxtaposition, the contrast between these two energies here. One is kind of looked in and secure and tight walls around you but potentially for some that energy can feel a little restrained a little suffocating but it's very very necessary definitely down there in the root chakra in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, in terms of stability comfort safety our ability to trust to feel safe and grounded to feel connected to the physical body here and then we have this freedom which of course is Wonderful and beautiful and filled with life and energy, but also potentially kind of scary, right? Um, very interesting that we've got such a juxtaposition. That suggests to me that what I've got here, what I'm dealing with here, is two people connected in a soul-connected kind of way, you and your person here. And yet you are both separately doing your own thing, but when I say separately, I, I genuinely mean the, the vibration between you and this person is is not the same. 
You're not on different portions of this journey. You're not kind of mirroring each other right now. Often in these readings, I see a great deal of mirroring. I'm kind of feeling the opposite. I feel like one person needs to go off in one very specific direction, whereas the other person needs to go off in another very specific direction. And that feeds into what we discussed last week, that there was this enmeshment, this entanglement and you needed you needed to kind of separate. I, I almost felt like I was a referee <laughs> in some kind of boxing match last week. And it was like separate corners, separate corners, you know. Um, so that's kind of potentially feeding back from last week. If you haven't watched last week's reading, it is up there. Um, and if you go over to Patreon to watch the extended for this one, you'll be able to get the extended for last week's as well for the same price. It's, it's no extra money. It's, everything just becomes available to you. Cards we've got here today. Seven of Pentacles. Saturn in Taurus. It's planning. It's looking at the big picture. It's patience. More pentacle energy. Six of pentacles, the moon in Taurus. It's about fairness and investment. Got two cards thematically linked. And the words, the key word is investment. Where are you investing? Your time, your energy, your resources. So this is definitely what spirit would like to speak about to uh, about today. We've got Queen of Wands here. Queen of Wands is free from expectations. So I would suggest here that we have an expectation, maybe a self-imposed expectation, maybe imposed from external sources. Generally, I find within these kind of connections, um, and I hate to use these labels because these labels really – they, they do confine um, the energies and, and they bring up connotations that aren't necessarily appropriate. So please do keep an open mind when I speak of these labels. So we have divine feminine or the chaser, and then we have divine masculine or the runner. Gender has nothing to do with any of this. Uh, it, it's all energy. If you are here, there is a significantly high chance that you are divine feminine and you are chaser again i'm not a massive fan of these labels but language and words can impose its limitations it's wonderful and it's given us so much but it can be quite limitating sometimes so again just, just be aware of that so what i find in these situations is divine feminine or the chaser will often have a lot of self-imposed expectations, expectations that they place upon themselves about how they feel they ought to be behaving, what they should be saying, what they should be doing, what they, what they, how they should be conducting themselves, where they should be going. And they put a great deal of pressure on themselves. And that is one of the things that Divine Feminine potentially needs to learn on their journey. Um, it's a journey of self-love. It's a journey of prioritizing the self. It's a journey of knowing that you're already good enough. You you are enough. You are enough. You know, and all these expectations you may be putting on yourself, you're already good enough. You know, you don't have to prove anything to anybody or indeed to yourself. What I find generally, and again, this, these are generalizations, this is a general read after all, is divine masculine has a great deal of expectations that usually come from external sources, often parental figures or mentors or like um, people in authority, like your boss or your employer um, or society as, as a whole, um, in which case maybe there are imagined expectations, but nonetheless, you know, you're both kind of in that same place, but the, ex the source of the expectations are coming from within and from without, depending on where we're at. So long-winded way of saying that these expectations for you, this where you are investing your time, where you are investing your energy. Queen of Wands is coming in to say, F that. You don't have to do what society is telling you to do. Um like ticking all of the boxes, doing it the traditional way, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, 
but it is worth bearing in mind that if that's what's the vibe of what's coming through, let, ask yourself, where are these expectations coming from? For you, maybe it is a parent who definitely wants you to achieve a certain things by a certain age. Maybe you could look at your person and, and, and consider where does your person's expectations, where, where's the origin of those things? And then we can move beyond that and um, ask ourselves, is it necessary? Are we putting too much pressure on ourselves? Can we delegate? Can we kind of relax a little bit? Can we take off? We, ha- we live in this society, this culture where the grind is revered right? You've always got to be pushing. You've always got to be pressing forward. You've always got to be striving for greatness and perfection and value. And, and, and the implication is that you don't already, you're not all, you're not good enough. That's the implication because if you're always chasing, this is a lesson that the chaser definitely needs to learn. If you're always chasing, then the implication is, is that you're without, you're, you don't, you're not good enough. You don't have what it takes because you, you, you're not there, right? But if you continually move the goalposts, you're never going to be there. And it is good to have ambitions and desires and goals. And it's great to be passionate and plan for the future, of course. But where do we draw the line here between what is necessary, what is needed, and what actually you can just just relax and tell yourself a, a, um, a more uplifting story about who you are and what your value is right now. Not if you achieve this thing, not when you've arrived at this place. Now, your value right now. High priestess, massively divinely feminine energy. This is clearly the message that's coming through for you, divine feminine, aka chase up. Um, queen, uh, the high priestess, it's the moon cancer and cardinal water energy definitely speaks of divine feminine. Um, this is sort of saying to you, there's something here that you need, really need to be paying attention to. There are ways that you can raise your vibration. And, and again, very much speaking of a look within instead of without kind of energy. When we get the messages, We'll see more, but this is definitely the kind of the way we need to see things. I want one more, please. We have the Ten of Wands, Saturn in Sagittarius. The Ten of Wands. This is a lot. You are putting far too much pressure on yourself. And it's, it's, it's too much. It's a burden that you shouldn't need to bear. The Queen of Wands would look at that and go, I don't think so. Not on my watch, right? And she's central energy here. Divinely feminine. Right. So now we've really firmly established way in which spirit would like you to consider these messages. Let us get the messages. Or I could just throw my box across my table. (laughs) Okay. Yep. There's two there, one there. There we go. Okay. So we're being greedy and we have six messages instead of the five because we have two on this Queen of Wands. It would make sense that the Queen of Wands would want a little, a little bit more. Yeah, that's so Queen of Wands, right? Queen of Wands is just, she's so slay, as my, um, as my daughter would say. <laughs> Um, as a Gen Xer, I feel a little uncomfortable using that kind of vernacular but she is. She's she's just so slay. <laughs> she says loudly, if there is somebody here in this equation that is unable or unwilling to give me what I want or what I need or what I deserve, no problem. It's not even personal. I'll just go ahead and give it to myself. Like literally with no like jade in, in with the greatest levels of respect all around. It's fine. Please, I give it to myself, right? That's kind of where she's at. And I love that she's she's sat there front and center. Um, 
She's almost trumping the high priestess today, honestly, and that is really unusual. But energetically, I have a card like the high priestess on the table when I'm reading for a divine feminine collective, and yet she, she's coming out strong. I, I kind of love that. Let's get the messages anyway to go along with your seven of pentacles here. Card of investment, a card of patience. What are you waiting for? A card of taking time, a card of perseverance. Number zero, one, two, two. The truth will out. Are you waiting for some kind of truth, some kind of clarity or an explanation? Uh, easy for me to say. That's my throat chakra tripping me up a little bit there. Maybe somebody's not speaking. I think somebody has, things have gone unsaid or there's an explanation that's absent in this equation. And I think you have waited for that clarity from, again, possibly from an, a, a source external from you. So maybe your person said something or didn't say something or ghosted you or vanished or betrayed you or hurt you in some way or behaved in a way that was unkind or unhelpful or felt kind of rejecting or abandoning. This, this happens a lot, especially in the early, earlier stages of these connections. Um, left you with a big question mark. And I think for a long time, you've felt that you cannot kind of move forward until you've had the explanation or the clarity. Um, I do think you will get it because the truth will out. But I also feel you should make sure that you are not waiting for it at the expense of getting on with your life. Uh, dropped one. There we go. I'm going to get an extra card on this just for some additional clarity on this message. The number 0122. It's right here at the top. That's purely for you. You know, maybe you could pick out the 22 or the 1 or the 12, or maybe the number 122 means something to you. However, you may or may not resonate with this number or this combination. Maybe it's like the 2nd of December or the 12th of February, you know, maybe there's an, a reason why that number stands out for you. If it doesn't disregard, leave that message for somebody else. I mean, not the whole message. I just mean, if a number jumps out to you personally, maybe that spirit's way of like really drawing your attention to that particular message, because that particular message is particularly important to you on this particular occasion. I don't know why I decided to use the word particular so many times. Okay, to go with your seven of the tower. Right, okay, so there was a shock. There was a shock, crash, sudden change, a blind side. Something changed really, really like overnight. The energy in the room changed or your person's treatment of you or their, their behavior or their, their opinion. You know, maybe they went from one day, I, I love you, I'll never leave, you're my light in the darkness and all of the stuff that they say. And then the next day it was like, who? New phone, who dis? Literally, right? So it, it was like a sudden U-turn here and you have been waiting for some kind of clarity or explanation regarding what the F happened, basically, in a nutshell. Um, I'll leave these ready to go for the rest. So to go with our six of pentacles, I think, as well as a card of investment, like I've already said, the moon in Taurus, this is a card of having a one-sided relationship. This is a card of like breadcrumbing. So it's invest, that is, is you investing your time and energy and your efforts and your resources. This is a question mark over the level of investment. Am I investing too much? Are they investing not enough? There's, a, there's an imbalance. You know, we can see this 
rich, wealthy man here who's just breadcrumbing a few coins here, but only to one of these gentlemen. So the imbalance is all over the place. Not only is one person clearly more well-to-do than the two that are begging and kneeling on the floor, but only one of the person that, that is begging is getting anything anyway. The um, merchant here carries the scales to suggest the scales are out of balance with this energy. It is a card of giving and, a re and receiving, yes, but it's a card of there being a question mark over, is this giving and receiving fair? Your message to go along with this one here today is number 0025. Pay attention to the vibes. Pay attention to the vibes. Yeah, if you feel that something is off, that's because something is off. It really is as simple as that. You may not have got it nailed down as to exactly what is off. You might even be wrong about what is off. But the fact something is off, especially when the high priestess is here in your reading here today, you're right. Something is off. And, um, and it's to do with how much you're giving, how much you're receiving. I don't think we need to be a rocket science to figure that one out, to be fair. Let's get a card to go along with this energy here today. Eight of Swords. Jupiter in Gemini. You haven't spoken up, have you? I think there's been many situations where it felt off. And it wasn't that you weren't paying attention to the vibes, but I feel, despite your awareness that something was off, you, you just didn't speak up. You felt as though you couldn't speak up, for whatever reason that may be. Um, it's time to give to yourself, I would suggest here. Um, but there's definitely this vibe of self-sabotage. Maybe this connection for some of you has really poked a deeply painful but long forgotten abandonment wound for some of you where when somebody does abandon you you maybe don't respond in a healthy way or at all even because maybe it kind of triggers something kind of primal inside you from when your brain was being we being wired as as a child essentially Let's have a look at this Queen of Wands. We've spoken about this, this queen, this, this queen that slays at length. I love her so much. Queen of Fire. So she is the Queen of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. She is the Queen of the First House, the Fifth House, and the Ninth House. Fantastic. Let's get the messages. She wants two, and she gets what she wants. Number 0350. Someone aches for you. Someone aches for you. And let's not uh, beat around the bush when we say someone, we mean your person. 0696, listen well. Now we have discussed that you felt your voice had been silenced and the high priestess kind of says, you don't need to speak right now. We are getting a message of listening here. Let's see what card we have to go with this. Oh, again, we've got two again. Queen of Wands, what are you doing? She just wants all the things. Page of Pentacles and the Strength card. The Strength card is, of course, the big one here. Um, Leo, Leo energy. The sun and more fire, fixed fire this time. And then we have the Page of Pentacles, which is... It's like a little offer. It's like a little... Proposal. It's like a little invitation. It's like a little seed that somebody would like to sow. But the overall message of the Page of Pentacles is there's two. One is keep your eye on the prize, and the other is focus on yourself first, aka practicing self care. What this is suggesting with this strength card up here is that in order for you to focus on what you need to be focused on right now, you have to listen well to yourself. You have to listen to your, it's, this is all about the self. 
and focusing on somebody else wanting you, aching for you, is not conducive to that. We need to turn the attention 100% on the self here. I would suggest that paradoxically, these two energies here that we brought up at the beginning, I think you need both of these things. In order to find a sense of security within yourself, you have to free yourself from the parts of this connection that have been constraining you. This energy over here, where we're tied and blindfolded and trapped and on uneven ground, we need to shift ourselves, we need to release and free ourselves from that so we can feel safe and secure in ourself first. Um, the psychologist in me wants to tell you to look up a secure attachment style. And honestly, many of you are probably vaguely aware of attachment styles. Maybe many of you are like very familiar with attachment styles and attachment style theory. Um, when people look into attachment styles, the big focus tends to be on let's figure out which one I am. And if that is an insecure attachment style, which it probably is, most people do have some kind of insecure attachment style. Um, then the, the, the temptation then is to kind of enter this place, this place where you're like, oh, woe is me. I have an insecure attachment style. I'm uh, a fearful avoidant. Or I have a preoccupied attachment style, or I have a uh, disorganized attachment style, or I have an avoidant attachment style. Chances are you're not avoidant being divinely feminine, but you're more likely to be anxious. But again, we're all different. Um, try not to get bogged down with this is the label I now have, and I am a victim of this attachment style, and this is why, this is why I behave the way I do. No, forget that. Forget all of that. Forget the thing you are that is difficult. Forget the thing that you might be that is challenging, and look at, okay, what do I want? I want to have a secure attachment style. Thank you very much. This is what the king, queen of wands would say. She would go, yeah, for that, uh, fearful avoid. No, 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 no. Fearful avoid and anxious. See that? No, no. I'm not. No, no. I'm not doing that today. No, thank you. No. Actually, I'm going to look at all of the qualities of what it means to be securely attached, and that is what I'm going to strive for. F this. No thanks. Not on my watch. Not today. It's, she's like, no, 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 no. But nobody's got time for all that. No, no one's got time for all that. Right. You don't need to be needed. You don't need to be wanted. Somebody else wanting you or aching for you is irrelevant. You're listening to yourself. You do not need that external validation. Queen of Wands does not need that external validation. If there's anybody that you can inhabit energetically today, this lady is where it's at. She is wise. She is ambition, uh, ambitious. Sorry. She, uh, one of the first things I said when she first came out was um, she is free from expectations. That really captures it. She seizes the day. She's fiery. She's pass passionate. She's optimistic. She's curious. She's social. She's like that social butterfly. You know, the one at the party that splits in between all of the groups and how are you? And you know, and then and then she kind of gets bored really quickly. Oh, lovely to see you. Oh, catch up with you. And boom, boom, boom. She's gone. She's gone. Like this mysterious, magnetic, beautiful butterfly that you cannot pin down. That's where you need to be. And this is not a fake it till you make it kind of situation. It's not. Absolutely claim this energy right now. I insist because this card would not be here if you did not have the capacity to embody this energy. There's no pretense here. This is who you are. You just maybe needed a reminder. Did you forget? Because you were so busy waiting for somebody else to give you permission to step into your queen of wands. <laughs> That's that. Step into that right now. Nobody gives the Queen of Wands permission to do anything. I, I've got goosebumps again. Seriously, claim the Queen of Wands right now because she is mwah, spectacular. We cannot believe in a reading with the High Priestess, the Queen of Wands is coming through so strong right now. I've never had that happen to me as a reader before. 
Queen of Wands trumping the High Priestess. Who would have? It's because this energy feels really quiet today. This is the external, what you're projecting into the outside world. But underneath the surface, this is what's going on. It's a reconnection with the self. Let's get the message. Oh, beautiful. 0658. Be vulnerable. Oh, there's such strength. Such a quiet, stoic strength in vulnerability. Oh, this is spectacular energy coming through for the divine feminine. And honestly, where is divine masculine today? Is that not the point? That's the shift. We we have we have just sim we have barely looked. And the energy isn't looking. Spirit isn't interested in you looking. Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Venus in Capricorn. So it's of the 10th house. It's of the house of boundaries, rules, discipline, achievements. It's a very masculine energy with an incredibly feminine energy here. So we've got the balance. How are you balancing your life? How are you managing your priorities? Are you leaving time for all of this self-care that we keep speaking about? If not, make time. You know, how does the adage go? If you, anybody that says, oh, I don't have time to meditate should be meditating for twice as long as everybody else, right? You need to prioritize yourself. And if that means sitting in like a Capricorn kind of energy where you're looking at the ways in which you can be more disciplined, that is definitely the way forward for you. You know, there's like a billion podcasts out there right now where you'll get, I don't know, like David Goggins will talk about discipline and motivation and mindset and all that kind of stuff. Maybe a, a little bit of inspiration in that kind of arena would be just the ticket right now. This is too much. It's too heavy. It needs to be released. Tapped into that slightly here is, are, are we are we prioritizing ourselves? Are we making sure that we have time for the meditation, for the self-work, for all of the things the Queen of Wands wants? She wants to be sexually attractive. She wants to be fiery and passionate. She wants a bunch of energy. She wants loads of energy because she's got so much to do. She's independent. She goes out. She she joins the salsa class. She goes out for a, for a stupid walk for a stupid mental health all by herself. And she doesn't wait for anybody. She doesn't rely on anybody. You know, like if her gym buddy lets her down in the morning, she's there at quarter to six in the morning, regardless. Right? She's determined. She's magnetic. She knows her value. This there's something that's preventing you from fully being able to sit in that energy, something that is preventing you from fully soaring high in this way, right? Let's have a look. 0347. <laughs> it's you. You are in the way. <laughs> it's always, it's always an inside job, isn't it? Everything. It's always an inside job. Look, you're in your way. Remember, you can always change the narrative. You can change it now, 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 now. Seriously, nothing is permanent. Nothing is set in stone. In stone, Everything can change all the time right now. Yeah, nine of swords, similar to the eight of swords energy, Mars in Gemini. Get some sleep. I think that's maybe if you're going to take this into a very physical, tangible 3D kind of place, and we're going to read the card in that way, then the priority numero uno right now could be focusing on getting an amazing sleep schedule locked in. Um, Andrew Huberman, if speaking of podcasts, has this wonderful podcast um, where he speaks to 
uh, Dr. Matthew Walker, who wrote a book called Why We Sleep. Excellent. Highly recommended. I am not on any kind of commission. I just love reading books like that. Um, and it's a great book. I've read it several times and it, it was game changer for me in terms of prioritizing my sleep. I used to have one of these, I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of attitudes. Um, I'm too old for all that nonsense now anyway. Um, but yeah, sleep is an absolute non-negotiable for me and prioritizing sleep in the, and not just saying, this is the time I go to bed. This is the time I wake up and remaining disciplined and consistent with that, but like working on my sleep health in terms of blackout curtains, eye masks, a nice cool, uh, mattress and duvet kind of situation, snack, less screen time before bed, having that kind of wind down ritual, getting early sunlight in the morning to wake me up, not using caffeine as a crutch. You know, it's, it's, there's a whole thing and there's a whole thing. Um, so for a lot of you, the, the first thing that you can physically tangibly do for yourself right now to show yourself how much you are worth and to, to start putting in those boundaries of personal self-care in place. And no, the, this is not, my friends know that if they call me, if they text me, after a certain time of night, I am not going to respond. I will not be picking up that message. And they know that they're going to get a reply at about half five in the morning. <laughs> but they know that. They know that that's, that that's one of my boundaries. If you contact me after 10 p.m., I will not be, my, my, that, my screens have locked down. I, I'm not, I don't do screen time from that time onwards. They know that. They understand that. They respect that. So that's a very, very tangible thing that I can leave you with here today. I'm going to take this over to an extended. Um, we're going to get a whole bunch more tarot on all of these messages here. And we're going to start pulling in some more, some of the get your deck out, some of the happy cards as well. Um, I might pull out my, yeah, I think I'll get some more messages for you all as well. This is great energy and it's definitely worth exploring more if this is where we say goodbye today because for whatever reason, you don't feel inclined or are unable to support me over on Patreon. Thank you so much for being here today. A like and subscribe would be really gratefully received. Thank you so much. And uh, I will be back next Sunday with another one of these. So keep your eye out. Uh, namaste.